Welcome to Fort Fritz. I am your host, Fritz, joined as always by co-host Man Daddy. Hi. Kaz. Hi. And Angela. Hi. What is <laughs> what is Fort Fritz, you might be asking yourself? Well, that's a very good question, of which we have no answers. None. <laughs> no. We have no idea we what don't we're doing. Know. It's tough. We just but stumble in here. We will entertain the hell out of you if it falls into the paranormal, supernatural, or otherwise. Pop culture. Yeah. Terrible things in human history. Sure. Local stuff. Local stuff, of course. By the way, great segue, Angela. I have an interview with someone who is absolutely fascinating. But before I jump into that, uh, after the interview, Man Daddy, well, he saw something. He reviewed it. But was it any good? Coming up, he's going to talk about Silence, the Netflix movie. Angela is going to give us the season eight premiere of the always popular Game of Thrones. It's the last season. Final season. Final season. Mm -hmm. And... Kaz has a story about Marvel characters who have been embattled in a graphic novel feud for a long time now, right? No. Well, so, no. Well, kind of. <laughs> More on that later. <laughs> right now, joining us via phone call is Mike St. Lawrence of the St. Lawrence Insurance Company. He has a very niche market, aliens and alien abduction. Mike St. Lawrence. Welcome to Fort Fritz. That's correct. I'm the uh, the head of the St. Lawrence Agency and the person that's offering ten million dollars alien abduction insurance. So, can you can you tell us a little bit about what made you want to insure people who have been abducted by UFOs? Well, uh, this goes way back. Actually, we started this in 1987 when I was watching a, a program on TV. To, uh, Larry King interview show, if you remember, it was on CNN about 9 o'clock at night. Yeah, of course. And he was uh, interviewing an author who had just uh, released a book called Communion. Okay, so one with the alien on the cover, uh, Whitley Strieber. And he was a Pulitzer Prize winning author that had, uh, had a best-selling book about people being abducted. Uh, after I saw that individual, uh, the author on Larry King, I went and I checked my homeowner's policy to see if I was covered for a risk like this, and and I wasn't. So along with a group of concerned friends and a, a strong Japanese investor, we started the UFO abduction insurance company back then. My brother was with me, and he happened to mention, he said, you ought to do something on that. And he left, and, and, I, and I really didn't know that much about the UFO phenomena, but uh, I wrote a policy in about 15 minutes, and we're still what? selling it. 32 years later. The same policy? Uh, it's only been a few minor changes. When we first started, we uh, referred to it as UFO abduction insurance, and the general public adopted alien abduction insurance. So I didn't want to uh, change it because I like the UFO abduction insurance name better. But about 10 years ago, I, sh I shifted it over to alien ab abduction insurance, and I thought I thought that Canadians and Mexicans could put me out of business in two weeks if they wanted to, because they're aliens. If they came in and abducted somebody, I, I gotcha. would have to oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, one, one of the things that uh, kind of hit me hardest was I heard about this from uh, Mysterious Universe, and then I also read on Miami Herald that for whatever reason, you popped back up in the news, so I decided to call you because... The St. Lawrence Insurance Agency is based out of Altamont Springs, Florida, right? That's correct. So when I called you, one of the first things that you asked me was, why now are you contacting me? Well, it was, I was curious what, how you found out about us. Because, and I had just sure. done an interview with the Tampa Bay Times. That's the actual article that you saw in the Miami Herald. It's the same article. And it gets syndicated around the country. Not all, you know, not all the country. Other, the AP Wire or something like that. They pick up stories when they see them. What in that article? Well, did you say something outside of what you've been saying since 1987, or did you just say it in a way that uh, let publications run with it? Uh, I didn't really change. I mean, I, to be honest with you, I've gotten publicity all throughout the world, especially in the 90s uh, when the X Files was on. And, you know, there was a lot of interest in. UFOs and stuff. And I, I always give the same message. I, I just want people to fully understand what we offer, and if it works for them, 
that type of thing. When I, I always pretty much, I tell the 100% truth. And I'm making fun of the insurance industry as much as I am the UFO abduction phenomenon, if you read the policy. Right, yeah. <laughs> Do we have any questions for Mike St. Lawrence of the uh, St. Lawrence Insurance Agency? Have you ever actually had to pay out one of these policies? Well, we, we've approved two claims. One was an individual Ooh. from upstate New York. He took out a policy and... Uh, he he read about it in his local newspaper, having breakfast with his buddies at McDonald's, I think. And uh, he'd been telling them forever that he had the experience of being abducted. And they said, you need to get in touch with this guy. So the guy said he had an, uh, an implant, and it was examined by a professor at MIT. And he said it was not made of any earthly substance. So then I started sending my check for a dollar a year for a while. <laughs> Until I lost contact with him. What? Wait a minute. Hold on. You had someone who actually contacted you with an implant that wasn't of an earthly substance? A gentleman from New York. And the guy said, the McDonald's. And they said, you ought to buy a policy. That was that guy. He could not verify that it, that it was in his body. Because he, he, what he saw was outside his body. Oh, uh, gotcha. They just brought it with them. Uh, but well, if, no, if, it, if, it, if it was not made of any earthly substance, that's pretty compelling just by itself. You know. Yeah, exactly. I think there's a lot of cases of that, actually. I think there's a lot of uh, instances where people have these, they're almost just like little flecks of metal tubes or something like that, and they always have uh, a problem identifying where they're from or what sort of material they're made of. It seems to be not common, but there's a few cases out there. Yeah, I, I had another one from New York, too, that sent me a Polaroid picture of the inside of a UFO. Ooh. Really? Is that something and, and you, you can is, share with us? I think I had a Polaroid on the inside of a UFO. And, but what I gotta tell you, when, when you looked at the, when I got the Polaroid picture, it was completely overexposed. You couldn't see anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he apologized because the lighting wasn't really good inside the UFO. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You'd think they'd get that down. Just not it set up. It's written for down in the margins, this side up. Okay. <laughs> nice. Did he really? This side up. He really did. <laughs> I want to give him a dollar a year for 10 million years just for a sense of humor. I think if you look on our website at ufo2001.com, you'll see we have something called the Texas IQ test. Did you get a chance to? Yeah, what is that? Because that was, <laughs> yeah, that was I love the name. It's fun. So, yeah, can you uh, just describe it to people who haven't been to ufo2001.com yet? I like to pay, tell people you can't get this if you don't get this. Okay, so we... <laughs> And if I'd gone over the terms and conditions, you'd know better that how to how to uh, view it. And it's how to do that real quick because that explains a lot. Yeah, there's only three questions, right? Yeah, there's three questions. Uh, first, a do you have a sense of humor? <laughs> and if you answer if you answer yes more than one time, you do not qualify to get this. Okay. <laughs> And part, uh, part. The second part is, uh, do you take this ins insurance coverage seriously? Most people say they have a sense of humor. At that point, if they say yes, then they're eliminated. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Genius. The third part is, were your parents related before they got married? <laughs> okay, so. That's valid. The Texas IQ Everybody test. gets right. one yes. You get one yes. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. To go over just a couple of the conditions, it's a $10 million policy with $20 million double indemnity should there be extenuating circumstances. Part A is medical coverage and includes all outpatient patient psychiatric care. We know there's a readjustment, you know, thing to go through if you go through something like that. Part B is sarcasm coverage, <laughs> and this is limited to your immediate family members only. <laughs> oh my gosh! Nicely done. Amazing. We found out through research that 70% of all the sarcasm initiates in the immediate family anyway, so we got that covered. Part C is double indemnity or the sum of $20 million in the event A, the aliens insist on conjugal visits. Oh, my <laughs> good God. Oh my God. You really don't know where some of these guys have been. Part B, if the encounter results with any offspring ever referred to as the next missing link. <laughs> I mean, that's just good business. Practice. Yeah, you got to cover your bases. You yeah. have to cover your bases. Yeah. Like and part C that. is uh, if the aliens refer to the abductee as a nutritional food source or the other white meat. <laughs> <laughs>
So wow. This is obviously something that, with a good sense of humor, this is something to me that seems like you have a really good grasp of what you can do within the law, and then you have fun with it. Do you have people who kind of criticize you? Criticize me for being a smart ass? That would yeah, happen. sure. <laughs> yeah. Do you do you have people, a professional one? A professional smart ass. Do you have yeah, people? I would say it comes with it comes with the territory. Uh, no, you know I have gotten very little criticism ever. I, I can. Only, I've only made. I've only made one refund, and we started this in 1987. And I had to send an, wow. uh, an older gentleman who heard on a radio show in the middle of the night, and when he bought, he threw his policy in his chest of drawers and didn't open it up for another ten years, and saw that it was a humorous policy, and he thought it was a real thing. Oh, <laughs> wow! It, was that Art Bell? The overnight uh, radio show guy? No, he, I'm, I always wanted to do a, a show with him. I sent him a policy trying to get publicity with him, and he he didn't nice. respond nice. to it. But uh, George Nori. Oh, okay, I think I George thought... Nori from Coast to Coast AM. Correct. So Boom. George Nori took over from Art Bell when Art Bell retired. I think in 1998, right? Uh, I think it was later than that. I think it was in early 2000s. I was on the show in 2005. And he he'd been on for about a year and a half or two. So it had been his show. So how was that like hearing the voice of God? <laughs> <laughs> he was real nice to me, and it, all the staff and everybody. I, I got an amazing response. I think we did the interview all around Thanksgiving, and we probably sold about three hundred and fifty policies that Christmas. You know? Oh, nice! Wow, wow. nice. So would you say the holiday um, time of the year, is that is, do you see like a big uptick? In... Yeah, do people give us gifts? It here's, is. Here's the you know how they say we do 50% of our business during the Christmas season? Wow. <laughs> that, wow. that holds true for this. I make as much money during Christmas. If I get publicity, I don't really advertise. But I, I never would have thought it was a Christmas gift. <laughs> no, it doesn't seem like it. So um, if <laughs> if we have any... Listeners out there who are, you know, curious, um, how would someone look up this information? And, uh, you know, I think everyone wants to know how much would it be to just. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Your in, basic policy. Insurance yeah. is that peace of mind. How much would it be to get alien abduction insurance? Tier one. You can't be turned down for the, this regardless of your age or your frequent flyer status. We, we have a uh, frequent flyer endorsement, however, which is a separate page in the policy, that limits the benefits to uh, one occurrence per policyholder. You can't collect more than once. You could still get a dollar a year for 10 million years. That's the way we pay like the lottery does. <laughs> right. That's awesome. We, we don't want to burden you with a bunch of money at one time. Very we kind. tell people this isn't about money. It's about peace of mind. <laughs> our, our guest tonight is Mike St. Lawrence from the St. Lawrence Insurance Agency. Now, I wonder, um, have, were you ever concerned that actual aliens would take out policies on themselves and then gain the system that way? Good question. I don't think our money's any good where they're from. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to open up new markets. So I saw online that uh, the Guinness Book of World Records actually acknowledged your insurance agency. Can you tell us a little bit about that? That was it was news to me. People uh, would call in and they'd say they saw where I was in the uh, Guinness Book of World Records, and, and and I went and I looked it up, and, and they they never contacted me or anything. But I am the originator of it. There was another company in. In England, that uh, plagiarized what we were doing. Two weeks after an article came out in the London Independent paper, which is a reputable paper over there, they published saying that they had offered UFO abduction insurance and they were approving a claim. And they were charging thousand dollars a year and they were misrepresenting what they were doing. You know that that uh, guy that I mean the people in San Diego that committed suicide, Heaven's Gate. Oh, Heaven's Gate yeah. Cult, yeah, 1997. They said they had them covered, which took oh. me off because I was the guy that started it, and they copied, you know, um, completely what I had done and, and acted as if they had been doing it. So, Mike, um, if if people want uh, further information, would you direct them to UFO2001.com? That would be the best place to go. There's a phone number if they want to call me and have any questions. 
I think they should know from our talk here about what we're all about. God, I would hope. <laughs> you just never know, Mike. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Mike St. Lawrence of the St. Lawrence Insurance Agency, a Guinness World Record holder. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. Well, that, that was absolutely amazing. It Thank was. you it very awesome. much, Mike St. Cool. Lawrence. Dude, yeah. St. Lawrence Insurance Company. You can get insurance to make sure if you get abducted, you get paid, honey. And that's peace of mind. It is. It really it makes you feel good when you go out you at night. You can't put a price tag on that. You can't. No. Thank you. Nope. You go to sleep at night. You know when you wake up the next morning, if you've been probed, you get a check in the mail. Coming up, we will hear from Angela, who will give us a season eight premiere review of the Game of Thrones. This is their last season. Kaz has two Marvel characters who are going to really blow your mind in terms of the scope of things he was telling me earlier. And also, Man Daddy, well, he saw the movie Silence on Netflix. Don't go anywhere. You are listening to Fort Fritz on Real Radio 104.1. Fritz on Real Radio 104.1. Yep, that's right. Welcome back to Fort Fritz. I'm your host, Fritz. Joined, as always, by Man Daddy, Hi. Angela, Hi. and Kaz. Sometimes it's not okay to curse. For instance, if you are you in an elevator, a uh, crowded what? mall, a uh, crowded church, anything crowded. What about an empty church? That's fine. No, never. Oh. But that's okay because we have edited versions of our podcasts and our minisodes and also broadcasts at realradio.fm. Just click on podcasts and click on Fort Fritz. You will hear all of our stuff completely e- 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 squeaky clean. That's the sound effect. A squeegee. <laughs> that was good. That's very I nice. liked, I liked, it took like, me a second, I didn't but I got it. I was like, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. You can also download the absolutely free app, iHeartRadio app, and uh, just search Fort Fritz. Man, Daddy, how is that spelt? That is I with a heart and radio. <laughs> <laughs> it's iHeartRadio, I-H-E-A-R-T-R-A-D-I-O. And then just download it, and uh, you can hear all of our uh, funny hijinks and misadventures. But A lot of misadventures. Completely clean, so you can play it in front of you know the little ones Safe while you're little ears. sanding your deck or mopping the floors, whatever you got to do. How can you listen to something when you're sanding a deck? That's usually a pretty loud affair. Headphones. Thank you. Headphones, Depends, yeah. Depends, maybe, yeah. Something Headphones. like Beats by Dre, mm-hmm. bumping. All right, so right now we're going to talk to Angela. Angela is going to keep us up to date on what is going on with Game of Thrones. They just had the premiere episode, and she's going to give us her thoughts, and she's going to try not to spoil it for all the people out there that haven't seen it. If you haven't seen it yet, what are you waiting for? It's been, like, days. Yeah, so. is it good? Um, <laughs> It was good. It's been about almost two years since the Put last, here, yeah. since two, uh, season seven. So one thing that I noticed people were really upset about with this episode, just to start this off, everyone had the assumption that every episode was going to be like two hours long. Right. This first episode was like 54 minutes, I think. What? They didn't even hit the whole hour. The second, and there's only six episodes in this season, by the way, to finish all this up. Um, The second episode, I think, is another only 50 something minute episode. But then the rest of them are all like 70, 80 minutes. Right. So the last four episodes are going to be super long, tie everything up. Who knows where the hell it's going to go. So um, this is a precursor. <laughs> like, get ready. Buckle yourself oh, in. Oh, it's going to be a bumpy yeah. ride. Yeah, it is. Get the popcorn out of the pantry. Don't make it yet. <laughs> you still got one more 48 minute long episode. Yes. Um, I mean, one thing that everyone's aware of is that a lot of people are gathering in Winterfell with the Starks. So that is really where a lot of stuff is happening in this episode. I have to be honest, I was a little underwhelmed with it. Really? Yeah. See, I've been hearing that a lot, and here's my uh, take, is that season openers are always the way that episode is, because you have to touch on every character, (laughs) you want to look at every little plot line, there's so many, so it's going to be a more, you're not going to get all your meat and your action in that first episode, it's just setting up, and I thought the things that they set up, and little things were just awesome. I really enjoyed that aspect of it. I, I agree with that. I thought the dialogue was a little bland. I thought it was just kind of very like, 
this. Yeah, but this. Yeah, but this. Next scene. This. Like, but like, this. But this. Are we talking Next scene. Fox sitcom bland? Yeah, I Ooh, kind of. Um, that's a pretty bland. I compared it to like a CW show. Oh, oh I was like, no, that's like, way that's worse. Went into the Arrowverse with this. How it I, was, I didn't really care about that. I don't. That's there really were a couple scenes that I felt very like uncomfortable. Like it felt a little cheesy to me. But there was one scene in particular that was majestic and cheesy simultaneously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which so, is hard to do. Yeah. The elephant in the room. No, they didn't have any. No, not <laughs> there weren't any. I'm looking at Kaz right now. <laughs> okay. Kaz, have you? Seen this season premiere? I have not. No. Okay. Ugh. I was too busy winning Game of Thrones trivia. I was about to say uh, the man killed it on my Game of Thrones trivia last night. One slaughtered everybody like the Red Wedding. It was amazing. <laughs> no one can help you. Yeah, I feel bad for you, son. <laughs> listening, <laughs> listening. To, ever since the premiere, I mean, you, people are dropping spoilers. It's not for this that episode, but for the season in general. I mean, they're just at, at this point. There's so many uh, iconic things that people, you know, when you say Red Wedding or things oh, like yeah. this, it's already in the zeitgeist. It's people, out there. People know what that is. Right. Um, I, but for the most part, I really did enjoy this episode. I thought there were some really wonderful performances, um, especially by John Bradley, who plays Samuel Tarley. I just wow, thought, yeah, yeah the that scenes was, that he that's did. That's the biggest he stretched. Oh, it was really wonderful. Um, those were the, com- the most compelling scenes for me to watch. And, you know, to kind of see some people and like their character arcs were pretty incredible throughout the, all these seasons and to see them who they are now being badasses from where they began and really sticking to that and be, like being who they have become was was really really great to watch i mean it's just such a well done show some people have their problems with it i've just been so invested in the show i watch every season multiple times all the time it's constantly on in my house i mean i can quote certain episodes and scenes and you can say certain lines i mean some people have like specific Lines that you just like constantly repeat to, to, to people, and um, there's a few good ones. Yeah, there's in the new episode, yeah. there's a uh, Daener- Daenerys had a really good one early on. I am really sad to see this this whole show be over. It's well, gonna, gonna hurt. They're gonna yeah. do like uh, spinoffs, right? They're gonna do. They are gonna do some like prequels. Um, I think it's gonna focus mostly on the Targaryens, correct? I, I haven't read really anything. I, yeah. From what like I heard, Age I thought they were going to do Age of yeah. Heroes. Age of Heroes, sorry. Which mm-hmm. Age of Heroes kind of delves into like weird god stuff. It's like Bran the Builder who built the wall and like all this like stuff. It's supposed to be kind of myth in the actual like lore of the of the story. Really? Or if these are myths coming from you know actions of people who did something extraordinary but not necessarily supernatural or whatever. Do you mind if I just jump into some commonly asked questions about uh, Game of Thrones and whether or not I, as someone who has not watched a single second, (laughs) if this is something I can jump in on, okay? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so question number one. How do I watch Game of Thrones? With your eyeballs. Open. Open? Yes. 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 Any other specific information? Um, Uh, You should try to have the sound up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it's on HBO. HBO. It's on HBO. Um, HBO Go. Maybe borrow someone's login for that. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no one does that. We would never advocate something oh. like or that. Or maybe pay for it through Amazon Prime. There you go. Um, which I do. And so, yeah, it's on HBO Go. Every season's on there, so you can go through it all and can, catch up. Can I watch this uh, episode without having watched any other no, episode. No, not Absolutely even a chance. Not. No, that'd be the worst thing you could ever do. And what I suggest for people who have never watched the show, obviously watch it chronologically, yeah. unlike I did, because it was shown to me out of order and I was very confused. <laughs> oh, God. That's just mean. Why? I know. Um, because <laughs> Mr. Angela had seen it a thousand times and would just play random episodes and I'd be like, I thought that guy was dead. And he's like, it's season one now. And I'm like, I, why are we watching it out of order? Why are you doing this to me? I had no idea what was going on. I could not get invested in it. Finally, watch the whole thing. Watch it with the subtitles, the closed caption. That does help. It helps because there are a thousand characters and yes, yeah, some people have like really thick Scottish accents and kind of helps you know what's going on. You can put faces to names. Once I tell people that, it like is a game changer for them. A well, Game of nice. Thrones changer. A Game of Thrones changer. You uh, just answered question three. Is it a foreign production? So I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the main thing about it is give it a few episodes. 
You know, okay. I mean, like uh, Jim Colbert mm-hmm. was talking that he started, he watched the first episode and turned it off before the endings. He turned it off with 10 minutes still to go uh, of the first episode. That's where it changes everything. That's the big change. Right. The I very last that. scene. The, the guy gets his. No, 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 no. You're talking about the no. season. We're talking about the first episode. I was talking about the dude from the one does not simply listen. That guy. No, he gets not Sean Bean. First episode, yeah. something terrible happens to a little boy. He does die in everything. He does. I mean, he really has yeah. the shortest contracts of any actor out there. He's in, he's out. He's By the pro. way, um, <laughs> I just found, I just saw somewhere recently, like, whatever, no judgment, but that guy's been married like five times. Sean Bean? Yes. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. And I was like, did he think that because he dies that he can just <laughs> can marry no, that again, wasn't me. constantly dying in in movies? That's like, well, till death do we part. And, I die. And I died. <laughs> Next, he like, found the loophole. Yeah, he did. He found the loophole. Way to go, Sean. Uh, yes. Well done. Hey, wait a minute! I died in Rockabilly Zombie Weekend. Trace. <laughs> oh, late, lady Daddy's gonna be super lady pissed. Daddy's gonna be mad. Lady Daddy, I forgot. About so, Angela, uh, the premiere of the very last season of Game of Thrones was it good? It was good. Okay, it was good. Did it answer questions or did it pause it even more? Oh no, it just kind of set us up for what else is coming. Okay, so kind of gathered everybody together, saw everyone's reactions to everybody. But this big looming thing is coming, so it'll change everything. Has the drama been built up, or is it just... Oh, yes, for okay. sure. Yeah. So basically, by nothing happening, and in, in air quotes, this is going to be a really brutal last season, probably. There Definitely. was There was one particular scene that was very intense that kind of did that whole Game of Thrones creepy, this thing looming looming that's happening that was like, ah, that's what I wanted was something intense and creepy like that. Um, the suspenseful thing that's coming. What was coming. it about? What, what was it around? Uh, so this is coming from Kaz, who has not seen it yet. So Kaz, would you like to know on air? I mean, we can tell you. I mean, Hell, I can I'm just going to say the Night King left a message. Oh, shh. It is. <laughs> yeah, and it is. That's an honest reaction. Badass. Yeah, it's, it's, it's massive, tons of badassery. Yeah, yeah. Because it, it, as soon as they they walked in uh, there and saw it, I was like, yes, mm. but no. <laughs> That's Game of Thrones right there. Yeah, exactly. That's a ba- Game yeah. of Thrones in a nutshell. Is, yeah, no. You scream at your screen more than that show than anything else, right? Yeah. And I will say it's. I don't know if it would be considered a foreign production. It's really an, an American show, yeah. but they George re- Martin's American. All the act, most of the actors are like British. It's right? George R. Right. R. Martin, right? George R. R. Or it's R. R. Georgie Martin. R. Like Georgie J. R. R. Martin I'll Tolkien. But most of the actors are British, um, Scottish. Scottish. Yeah. They are. It's all like well, pilfered heavily from like BBC. Scottish, show. you are British, right? Because you're part of Great Britain. Britain. Uh, don't tell them yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, don't tell them that. <laughs> I wouldn't say it to one of them. Um, George R. R. Martin. And a lot yes. of Danish actors as That's well. That's true. Yeah. Danes. This is going to be quite a watershed moment, I think, in, in popular culture because this is, you know, it's it's that fantasy drama element, but it's also supernatural in that the White Walkers, the Dire Wolves, this entire franchise has done such a good job of bringing all of those fringe elements into something that is completely unique. Right. And they've made this entire universe. So it's going to get it's going to get sloppy, right? It's Basically. Gonna get pretty yeah, pretty there's crazy. A lot of people going back. Yeah. Oh, um, I, I did make my uh, my death list. Wow. Yeah. So before we watched that first episode, um, the group that I was watching it with, we all made a list of who would be alive and who would be dead. At nice. this is it like in order, like do you have to if you don't hit number one, number two, number three, or is it just like who no, you think no, is who just you, oh, like okay, okay. and some people have done it where they have like this one's gonna die, then this one, then this. Well, one. no, some people have like life, like they live, they die, and they become a walker. But it was like, well, if they become a walker, that's technically dead. Yeah. So, yeah. so we just made two that. different columns, and <laughs> I mean, I think I was preparing myself emotionally. I pretty much just put everyone dead, and I'm like, oh. I'm just, you know what? I'm just gonna get used to it. I'm just gonna get used to everyone that I love is gonna die. Yeah, like, <laughs> pretty much. Thank you. It sounds like uh, it's gonna get a lot worse before it gets better. Yeah, I've heard that the ending's bittersweet. Mm. And and I've heard that George R. R. Martin didn't like the ending. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I heard that too, yeah. actually. Um, and also for people who are book people or never read the books or interested in reading the books, haven't watched the show at all, um, Kaz has read all of them. Probably multiple times, right? 
Oh, yes. no, yes. look, he just did his little hot dog dance with his head. Um, the show is completely different. Once it gets to a certain point, it's gone a completely different direction because characters who are dead in the show aren't in the book, vice versa. I mean, there's just... Some, some people are like amalgamations of other characters in the books. Uh. So, like multiple things are happening to this one person that are like separate people in the books. Thank you. I was going to ask what amalgamation was. So, amalgamation. Amalgamation. That's when they do it in TV. Um, <laughs> so the the direction they've gone in the show is vastly different from how the books will be. So also just know that. So you actually get two endings basically with these characters. I've been waiting for book six. George, if you can hear me. If you can hear my voice. That's Kaz at FortFritz.com. <laughs> George R. R. Martin. I'm done waiting. I don't yeah. care anymore. Thank you. It's over. Like yeah. every year I'm like, this is gonna be the year when he like announces that it's gonna come out and they're like, no, but hey, guess what? Another historical social studies compendium of the world of ice and fire or whatever. And it's like, those are great. I love them. But put out the book, dude. Kaz is very, very passionate about what he reads because he has a very, very interesting story about uh, two Marvel characters coming up. And also, Man Daddy saw a movie, well, he thinks a certain way about it. A very strong way about it. You are listening to Fort Fritz on Real Radio 104.1. On Real Radio 104.1. Welcome back to Fort Fritz. I'm your host, Fritz. Joined, as always, by co-host Man Daddy. Hi. Angela. Hello. And Kaz. Hi. Be sure to download that iHeartRadio app. Search all of your favorite Fort Fritz moments. Share them with friends. Right, Man Daddy? Oh, I think that's the most There's a lot of uh, tender moments, a lot of touching moments. And if you never listen, the radio show is the radio show. The podcast is the podcast. The podcast, you've got some storylines. You've got some sound effects. You've got some funsies going on. So check it out. Let people know about it. That is the Fort Fritz podcast. That's on iHeartRadio. So right now, Kaz, uh, I hear you got some uh, new comic book oriented news to hip us to. So I'm not, I've never been like a big comic book guy, right? But I have specific like weird nerdy like little pockets that I fall into. And one of them is uh, the movie franchise. I know it was a comic book originally, I believe. Uh, Blade. What's his name? Blade. Oh my God. I love Blade. It's so, it was so dorky but cool and Wesley like I really like Wesley Snipes and the second one had like all my favorite people in it it was like Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro directed it the RZA did the soundtrack Ron Perlman was in it Donnie Yen was in it Norman Reedus was in it it was just fantastic fantastic movie I love it when you say dorky nerdy slash uncool was that the I didn't graphic mean uncool novel? I mean like I mean yeah I, maybe uh, I was just self projecting the first uh, the first movie was kind of uh, like more what you expect from like a superhero movie it was like you know very martial artsy kind of but shot in an interesting way the storyline I thought was interesting the character was interesting but again I was like a little kid and I was just watching like Wesley Snipes beat beat up vampires and it was awesome like it was just resonated with yeah. me, I guess, when I was, whatever, 10. I don't remember when it came out. Was this also a graphic novel before before the movie? I believe so, yes. It was a, co- it was a comic book series. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 he's a Marvel character. I so, just immediately knew about it because of the movie. Okay. Yeah, I had no idea. So Marvel. Blade oh, yes. is, uh, he's a uh, vampire hunter, mm-hmm. but he like is Buffy. correct, um, knows martial arts similar to Buffy, uh, but he is half vampire. Not like Buffy. So he is a, he is a vampire. He needs to consume blood, or he has this uh, with the development of his old friend uh, Whistler. Whistler uh, develops this like serum that he can take that like acts as like this like substitute for blood. So he doesn't actually have to kill people. But unlike normal vampires, he can he can walk around during the day. He's like a normal person. Day walker. He's a day walker. <laughs> so. Um, First Blade was awesome. Steven Dorff was the main uh, antagonist in that, Dorf. and he was in Dorf. True Detective Season 3 recently. <laughs> Completely, like he you said, so unrecognizable. Great. Yeah, he was so good. In Steven Dorff Blade versus Steven Dorff True Detective is like, 
it's like Steven Dorf's dad. I don't know how much time like, <laughs> has passed between there, but it's like Dad Dorf. Anyway, Daddy Dorf. <laughs> it sounds a little more it, that, it sexy weird. that way. And Daddy Dorf, oddly erotic. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not. Uh, so who who is Blade paired up with in this? In this comic. So in the comic, uh, there's – I just read about it. Apparently, the guy has been writing it. I've, I'm blanking on his name right now. But he, he said he's been writing it for 10 years. Ooh. Blade versus Wolverine. Ooh. What? Whoa. Right? So I like when they pit like two good – like so the Batman su- versus Superman thing. They did pit you, like two good this? guys. Angela Mandetti, did you know it, it would be Blade versus Wolverine? No, I was, in the trying, I was thinking no. who it would be. But I didn't think – I mean, when you think about Blade with the guy with the blades, kind of works. It'll be. It's an interesting is it an idea. Equal fight? I don't know. Probably not. Is it I feel ever like an not. equal fight but with why Wolverine? Would they fight? No. Yeah. Do you know why, Wolverine, why would they fight? Wolverine fought the Hulk. The Hulk ripped him in half, and his half body had to crawl like two miles to get his other body. So Wolverine is a little tough to beat. I uh, I read a tweet recently that made me laugh. It was uh, yo, I figured out Wolverine's superpower. It's not super healing. That Canadian Universal Healthcare just be hitting mad fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good though. I like that. That was really good. So yeah, Blade versus Wolverine, and Blade and Wolverine were kind of two of the ones that, like, as a little kid, X Men, um, the animated series. He was badass, and then they did the Days of Future Past, where he's like in the bubbly tank. It's like just a skeleton. I'm like, how, who, who could have killed Wolverine? It was like one of those like moments of like the good guy can die. Like, um, so I'm interested. I, I normally am not like a comic book reader, but I think I'm gonna end up checking this out just to, because it's Blade and Wolverine, and like, I, yeah, it for sounds sure. very very cool. Uh, in reading that, I actually saw that apparently there are now talks to possibly reboot the Blade franchise. With Wesley Snipes yep. again, yeah, there's what? still there's still talks about bringing back Wesley. Right, yeah. there's actually uh, there's supposedly there's two movies in production, one with him and one without him, and uh-huh. we'll see which one actually gets fully funded. You know, I feel like what like Wesley just has the badass blade thing going for him, right? It's like he's just kind of he's a little sarcastic, and it's he's got that kind of like jaded, uh, like I'm over this kind of thing, mm-hmm. but at the same time he's 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 whipping whipping tail. Um, Can we say ass? Is that, is ass cool? Yeah, of course. Yeah, right. yeah. He's ass, is ass always cool. <laughs> um, do you guys want to do a little uh, quiz? Sure. It'll be like two minutes. Does anyone know Wolverine's birth name? Logan something. No, it's not. It's not Logan. Um, it's. Oh, oh man, I have no idea. Harris. James Howlett. Yeah. Does anyone know Blade's given name? Jasper. It's Jasper. <laughs> <laughs> Jasper the vibe, Vampire Hunter. It's actually, yeah, it's, it's actually Jasper. Is it really? No, it's, no, it's Eric not. Brooks. <laughs> but that was a good guess. I was going to guess Brooks as the last name. Here is the... <laughs> Jasper Damn Brooks. It, I Damn, you, I'm like, sorry. I almost said it. I cut you off. I'm sorry. So close. <laughs> last one. Which year did Blade debut, and which year did Wolverine make their first appearance in the Marvel Comics universe. What year did Blade debut, and what year did Wolverine debut? Blade had to have been. Blade, Blade I'd put in late 90, 80s. Late 80s? 80s early 90s. In the, in the comic, this is not the movie. This, this is, is the, the Marvel oh, comics. Okay. The Eight, Marvel universe. 87 for 87 Blade. from Angela. I'm saying 91. Daddy, do you want to? I'll, uh, I'll go 88. 87 from Angela, 88 from Man Daddy, 91 from Kaz? Okay. Before I say that, let's do Wolverine. Oh, that's oh, that's that's much seventy fun. something. Uh, I'd actually I'd go seventy one. Seventy one from Mandetti. That's the first hard answer. Angela, Kaz, anyone? Seventy six. Seventy six from Kaz. Mm. Seventy one from Mandetti. I'm going to say sixty six. Sixty six. That call. is a really really good call. Unfortunately, had you guys reversed that. You really? would have been somewhere close. Blade made his debut July 1973. Really? Oh, wow. What? Wolverine made his debut November 1974. Oh. oh. Wolverine Damn. post-dates Blade, and Blade precedes Wolverine. I wow. didn't know that. That's, That's really interesting. Crazy. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought that. I always think of Wolverine as the kind of like cornerstone Marvel yeah, kind right. of character. Yeah, I mean, He is one of the the quintessential to me Marvel comic book characters, especially from the X-Men. Right. It's him and Storm and uh, Cyclops. A lot of people hate Cyclops. There's a lot of hate for Cyclops for some reason. I mean, it's a comic book. You know, grow up. (laughs) (laughs) I've got nothing else to say to you. You don't understand comic books. So Blade Wolverine, do you think it's going to... I think it'll be cool. I'm I'm interested to see how it's... uh, What what they're going to do. Like, what... uh, in Batman versus Superman, one of them became, like, evil, right? And they had to, like, be stopped. So I wonder if they play on that or if they're just like, I don't like you. 
Yeah. We're, bo- we're both okay guys, I guess. Well, it's, kind weird. Of it's just out of what Blade does. You know, why is Blade messing with the mutant? It sounds more like me. It'd probably be Wolverine has to go after Blade. For what? Wow. I don't, but, I don't know. But just I don't see why Blade would go after Wolverine, you know? Wolverine I mean, sort of seems like he wouldn't really care whatever was going like, Unless, unless it's like Blade a direct threat. Right, yeah. exactly. I hear, I hear there's a very strong movie review coming. I sense oh. a strong movie <laughs> review coming from over here. Man, Daddy, what do you got? So, from your brooding silence. So uh, I've reviewed a number of movies on this show, and I tend to be very nice. Uh, I tend to uh, enjoy what I watch, and I watch what I enjoy. That's usually true. like sixes and above. Yeah, yeah. you're I, usually really I'm very nice. Yeah. And so last night, Soft. I was in thoughts of the show. I was like, I needed something to talk about, and it was, and uh, I turned on the Netflix, and up popped up a new movie called Silence with uh, Stanley Tucci. Okay. And so I'm like, hey, Tucci. let's give this a try. And I would like to say the movie Silence on Netflix. Is the hottest of garbage in the land. Take all the garbage, find out which garbage is hot, and this is hotter, saltier, steaming garbage. Salty garbage. Salty, horrible Salty garbage. garbage. It was so bad. First, you had A Quiet Place. Absolutely amazing movie. Okay, like, so why well done. Why is that the first movie that popped your mind? Well, because they're, 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 it's the same. <laughs> it's the same idea. Seen that. Uh, you still haven't seen Quiet Place? No. So worth your time. Same, I, yeah. So worth both of your times. Yeah, I loved it. I really seen. enjoyed it. All right. And so then, which, of course, you're in a world in the quiet place where there's these monsters that are killing everyone on the planet, and you just can't make a sound. And that's the main thing right, about Quiet yeah, Place. Yeah. Which is the exact same thing with silence. It's basically you're in a world where you can't make sound. But here's uh, the difference. Oh, my God. Really? Like, yes. that's, that's a little clo- uh, it's like the, It just happened. We talked right. about this. The Armageddon Deep Impact, yes. right? Like, yes. you got to like, come yes. on the heels oh, of the cool thing that, like, Saz was right again. Stupid. And here's the thing. When you watch... <laughs> Angela. Nice. When you watch A Quiet Place, there is such an urgency to it. The movie is very quiet. Like, I mean, it, it is a quiet place. When you're watching the movie, it is silent. And it, the the main uh, the 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 girl that's the actress in it was an, actually a deaf actress. Mm. And so the, just this urgency and the tension. This movie has none of that. None. None. Not one bit. It is just horribly done. And so the whole idea is that they're they're doing uh, some sort of excavation, and they open up some temple that has been opened up for like 20,000 years, and all these weird little bat creatures fly out and just start eating everybody. Ooh. That's it. Bats flying, little bat things flying around eating everybody, and they're attracted to sound. And so there you go, the whole thing. Everybody tries to be quiet. The movie is never quiet once. There is not one quiet moment in this entire movie because these stupid bat things make this horrible noise constantly. And so they're like sitting there trying to creep around all silently, but all you hear is. <laughs> there's, it's like, okay, why? Like, there's one scene where uh, Stanley Tucci is trying to be really silent, but there's this one little bat next to him, and he's trying to go around the bat, and the bat's just screaming away. And wouldn't that attract some of the other bats? Yes. Not in this world, not at all. There is just, once again, there's one scene <laughs> where a, a random woman is loudly protecting her house. She gets attacked and sent down, and it sounds like a well. Like, you can hear her go, oh, but her feet never leave. It's obviously a fire pit, and someone who's doing the sound just said, oh, that looks like a well. Looks like it sounds like she's going down a well. Nope, it's a fire pit. You can see her feet the entire time. Uh, there's one point where there's a rattlesnake shows up. He's got notes, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, yeah I actually wrote notes. That's how much this movie pissed me off. <laughs> rattlesnake. There's, there's a guy's in a tube, <laughs> and there's a rattlesnake, just a rattlesnake, <laughs> and 50 yards away, 20 feet in a tube, but they can hear it over all the screaming bats. There's bats screaming, but the one, and the bats like, oh! So they're like, it, it makes no sense. Once again, there's one part where a guy is trying to slowly, carefully open this gate, and but and like, why when you and, have bats? Right. Okay. Like here, if if we can, since we're on yeah, yeah, since sure. we're Fort Fritz, we can do this. Mm-hmm. So right now, uh, give me the sound of a bunch of just birds flying around. Well, it's going to take me some time. You got it. Okay, there you go. That's nice. Okay, and add just a bunch of squawking and chirping and just a, just a cacophony of noise, okay? Something like that? Cacophony. That's it. Okay, perfectly. Mm-hmm. So that right there is the whole movie, and it's that's the, si- the movie called Silence is what you're hearing right now. Let's listen to Silence. Yeah, yeah that, that's totally nice. silent. Really silent. 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 That's funny. That's true, because evidently the bat screaming sound is, is a version of silence in the world. Um, there's, there's a weird uh, scene with someone, uh, a sexy... T- uh, scene in a bathtub where you see someone's giant talon scar for no reason. Uh, it, it's just there is there is no tenseness. There there is a scene where thunder is happening and doesn't change anything. It's like well, when the bats run to the thunder, right. ah, they're just doing their thing. It is just it is hot, hot, 
hot garbage. I could, uh, this movie actually made me mad. I was like tweeting about Jesus. it the whole time. It just it was it's just not Stanley Tucci. Love you and you know Tucci gang, Tucci gang, Tucci gang all mm-hmm. the way. Of course, <laughs> but damn man, damn it, I'm get that paycheck, but damn. Man. Well, I mean, I think I speak for everyone when I say, how many Man Daddy Beard Pools would you review Silence out of seven? Shave it off. Not even, don't even touch the beard. Don't even touch your beard. Don't Shave it off. Zero. Before you. Oh my Here, gosh. Here's, how, here's what I want everyone to do. I want everyone to watch this movie with their friends and riff track it. You can watch yeah. this and do your own Mystery Science Theater 3000 with this f- film so easily. Because yeah, it nice. is just so bad. So get your friends together. What's up, boy? You know, you and that? just laugh at this horrible piece of trash, man. Mm. I love good movies and I love fun Passion. movies. But to, to, to take this idea that's already been done, you know, because he had Bird Box, which some people love, some people hate, which is the mm. same thing, but with Sight. Mm. And now it's like, okay, well, let's do it again with sound. Just here's the idea. Okay, it's called Silence. With no silence. How about that? Huh? How's that edgy? Horrible. <laughs> Just horrible. <laughs> Just made me mad. Still makes me mad. They should make one without smells. <laughs> you can't Was smell. it smangry? Smangry? What is smangry? When smells make you angry. Smangry. Well, you heard it here first. Smanger management. watch it with your friends and laugh at how bad it is. Sometimes you want to watch a really, really bad movie and go, I can make a better movie. Yeah, so you know what the good stuff is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you're looking for a palate cleanser, this is basically like (laughs) licking sandpaper, okay? I just basically started hate watching it, you know, like 20 minutes and just like... (laughs) So that right there is my review of Mm. the film Silence on Netflix. Watch it if you want to torture yourself alone or get your friends in a room, pop a keg and have some fun with it. That's the only way you can enjoy this movie. Man, Daddy, uh, it's getting about that time where uh, we can't spend a night in this haunted house. So, uh, well... We got to kick people. It's time to check out of the fort. Uh, once it starts getting a little dark here in the fort, things get a little scarier. So we got to get out. We got to wrap it up. Let you know what's going on in our lives. We it want you to check out. It gets a little blue. Gets a little blue. What do you want to wrap it up with, there, Fritzy? Well, I am uh, building a guitar with my brother, and it is a Fender Jaguar. And I would love to show you photos. So just go to realradio.fm, click blogs and Fritz, and you will see them. If you've ever wanted to do something, do it. Whatever time is more convenient to you, call up a friend who will hold you in check and just do the damn thing. And you can encourage that person to to do something that they've never done before. So that, Very cool. I will say check out yourself. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> wow. Angela? Well, um, again, I want to plug my friend show. Um, does that make sense? Uh, tickets just went on sale on Monday at OrlandoFringe.org. So look up, does that make sense? And please come see our show. Um, and then also, I recently did my first film. And um, nice. the trailer just came out, so I'll post that on our page. Oh, oh what's it called? Yeah. Oh, it's called Forever Tea Party. I play a fairy. It was a really cool experience. I had never done anything like that before. You know, boom mics and everything, you know, costumes and makeup artists and hair and it was really an incredible experience. So this trailer is out anyone can view it? Yes and it's directed by Barry Kirsch So if you want to see it check out realradio.fm go to the blogs and look up Fritz and I'll post the um, trailer there. Hell yeah Kaz what you got? Uh, so like I said in the last one I am I'm, I've got three done I'm looking at a potential full six uh, kind of a not Aesop's fables but I'm doing like a like little short stories that are gonna compile into like a larger kind of uh, longer thing but you'll probably never read it so it's now I'm not posting it on anything so you can <laughs> just, just I'll let you guys just read tease. it oh, okay you guys right. will be able to read it but I have like, this amazing thing and no one's gonna see it. If, if 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 it gets the uh, nod of approval from you guys, then maybe we'll post a snippet on something of uh, iHeart. But so, it's radio, and this is going to be text version, so I don't know if the like radio people can read or not. Well, also, um, <laughs> sometimes you have to, cre- as a creative person, you have to create something for yourself. You know, and that's mostly what this has been. You yeah, can't always much. publish everything for someone. Right. But you also can't do art for other people. You have you to do it for yourself. You. It has right. to mean something. If right. you're, that's when it turns into crap. 
it's not for people. It's really for you. Yeah. yeah. That's it's where for it starts. therapy. Mm-hmm. What you got, man, daddy? Well, uh, of course, as always, please, I would love to see some of y'all at my trivia nights. I host trivia first, third, and fifth if they're there Mondays at Orlando Brewing. Of course, this uh, week we did Game mm-hmm. of Thrones trivia, and Kaz <laughs> destroyed it like a Dothraki on meth. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> Kaz, Kaz I answered saying, most of my questions in Dothraki. I don't know if you noticed that. <laughs> the, the Dothraki translation next to it. I also I also do trivia at uh, Lucky's Market on Tuesdays from four to uh, from five to seven, and also I do '90s trivia at uh, Cheers Altamont on Thursdays at seven. I'd really love to see some new players at Cheers and Altamont. Great drink specials, great people. But the main thing also I want to let you know about four twenty at Will's Pub is the big CBD throwdown. A lot of bands play my band. Gargamel is going to be playing. Kaylee Baker is going to be playing. Groove Trunk. Anthony Cole's band is going to be playing. A lot of uh, great products. Uh, a lot of great education about CBD oil. Please direct these guests out of the fort. We're glad you stopped by, but you got to get out. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Thank you very much for listening. We are Fort Fritz, and you're just you. Until next time, pleasant dreams.